Athletics now, and some Kenyan athletes who will be taking part in the New York City Marathon on Sunday have expressed confidence of good results. The athletes who left the country on Tuesday evening include Olympic gold medalist Perez Jeff Jirchir, former Olympic 10,000 meter silver medalist Sally Kipiego of USA, and former world champion Augustin Choge. World half marathon record holder Kibi Watt Kandi and American best Kenyan athlete Viola Lagat will be making their marathon debut in the 50th edition of the annual major marathon. The Kenyan athletes will be facing stiff competition from the Ethiopian rivals, including Kenyan Issa Bekele, who is the second fastest marathoner of all time, of course, behind our very own Eliud Kipchoge. <laughs> Really win Olympic marathon because I was not expecting. I mean, if I am Morel Sana and Motisha, na ni mejiamin sa sa kwa sa sa kwa marathon because I was still new in marathon, but ni me kujogo kundo akila kitu na wezekan. Kila kitu na wambi a fans wangu wa wasikwe na wasiwasi sita wale down ata marathon ni kushua na na feel kuwa neta weza. I'm really excited because I want to challenge myself <laughs> because I know it's going to be a very strong field there. There will be really, really good athletes, so I know I have some work to do, so that makes me a little nervous. Back to Kenyan football and defending champion Stask FC came from behind to beat new base Police FC 2-1 in a football Kenya Federation Premier League match rescheduled to play Adi Kasarani Annex. Samuel Dungu's header put the police ahead in barely two minutes after kickoff before Tasker leveled the score four minutes later through Tanzanian forward Ibrahim Joshua. Simi Silishi then fouled Boniface Mushiri for Shami Kibwana to then convert and give the Brewers the lead. The win took Tasker to 10th on the league standings with six points while police had 14th with three points. In the days of the match, Gurmaya and Ulinzi Stars drew nil-nil to keep Kogalo at top of the standings with 13 points from five matches. By the way, we have options. We have options. Lakini sasa hapo defense lazima tuimarishe. Sababu Gozodi zimefungwa tumefungwa na the same side. Natoka hivi inakuja hivi tunafungwa. Haikuwa ngumu haikuwa rahisi. Sababu police wali lose game ya juzi kwa hiyo tulijua leo itakuwa na watakuja akiwa juu sana. Na wamejaribu kwa uwezo wao. Pia si tumejaribu. Ah hiyo kufunga hizo mabao zetu mbili zimetusaidia first half. Na ile sasa ukakamavu na ile organization tulikuwa na and Kenya's representative at the inaugural CAF Women's Champions League, the Higa Queens, have arrived in Cairo, Egypt, ahead of the tournament's kickoff on Friday. The multiple Kenyan champions opened their campaign on Saturday, November 6, with a match against South Africa's Marmelody Sundowns. They will face Morocco's Asfar Club in the second group game on November 9th, before taking on Nigeria's River Angels in the last group match three days later. The Higa qualified as Sikafa region representatives after winning an eight team zonal qualifier in September. The CAF Women's Champions League kicks off with host Wadi Degla opening their campaign against Monday of Mali. Sequence at Otaka to Ingie Semis. Then from there to fake finals, mm -hmm. from there to bebe, to kuja na title. Ndaka ni kwe top scorer pia, mm -hmm. na sita angusha anya inji yetu. We have had uh, good preparation since we played our uh, last uh, the Sekafa Interclubs in Kenya. Yeah. We have been in camp for more than a month, so we believe that uh, uh, with the good preparation that we have had, mm -hmm. we, have, we are going to have a very interesting tournament. Let's let, get you started on that conversation about the state of Kenyan football and I have the right people to help us dissect it from every angle. The state of Kenyan football today, to put it into perspective with me in studio this morning, is John Jogu, the football coach and director of the Riru Sports Academy. Coaches, good morning in Karibu. Karibu, uh, Asante sana. All right, also joining us in the studio is a name that you're much familiar with if you follow Kenyan football. James Situma is the chairman of the Kenya football. Football Welfare Association, and of course, a former Harambe Stars defender, I believe. Good morning. 
Good morning. Karibu sana kwenye show. Nashukuru bana Shafika. Asante. Yeah. And also joining us this morning, you know him very well. David Kolimo is my colleague here at the Nation Media Group. David, good morning. Good morning to you and I'm happy to be here. Asante. Yes. And also joining us this morning is Boniface Mbani. He will be joining us shortly uh, virtually. He's a former Harambe Stars forward and will be engaging all my guests on the state of Kenyan football. But uh, let me start on a very familiar tone with the national team. We had not qualified for a tournament uh, for the AFCON since 2004, and then we did the other day, and we knew ah, we are back. But then in this year, in a group that we were with uh, Comoros, suddenly we just didn't qualify. And now we are not going to the World Cup in Qatar. Now, as we'd like to say in the streets, Sisi Mafans, Ndoto Naumia. Situman, tulikosea wabi. Of course, um, every Kenyan who loves football, uh, and I feel the pinch. Yeah. And again, you know, uh, football, uh, see science. It's something, Nikito <laughs> Lazima, <laughs> you have to prepare, you have to work for, for it. No, mm -hmm. uh, football, it may change. So it may, it may change a lot, you know. The current generation, who can compare with the previous generations. Uh, uh, the caliber of Musotieno, Tom Juma, these are MZ, Saizu Kiangalia Kina, Michael Coates, mm -hmm. Nona. Kiangalia, the, car, the crop of players we have at the moment, these are different players. And I say, ma, at the moment, uh, we have more skill. Na, dynamics may change, Saizu mm -hmm. Kiangalia in football. So, Kiangalia, Kila country, Kiangalia, those countries, they are growing, Kiangalia, come on, the last Africa Cup of Nations. We, we had uh, new uh, new teams in Akuja, in make the debut, in a perform, in a perform so well. So, aina aina two ways in a kuanga two the way you prepare and the way um, the, the vision and mission you don't attack. Because I'm looking at the national team, uh, aina a chance that maybe to neza gamble, you know, na looking at maybe kiti me tu miza sana. Maybe neza se ma personal you na parani consistency that you just at the national team, you know, na looking at those uh, developed countries, uh, those um, champion. Countries and you make the football or may grow in football, or a pale top on the world. Okay, I'm going to consistency on the in the national team mm -hmm. from the youth players. Okay, I'm going the structures let's make one to place. Okay, I'm going transition from youth players to the senior uh, from youth teams to the senior teams. You know, part of the transition in make so smooth. You know, part of killer kit in a flow. No, no, but I think maybe for us, uh, you along the way, see what na like to na the link in a katika because okay, I'm going at times, we come up so well with the youth structures, the under 20, you know, maybe they, they are involved in the tournaments. Mm -hmm. But at another time, maybe Nangalia, these players, once I work on national team, what's happening behind the scenes? Because we, we still need them. No? So, we along the way, maybe at a Mchazaji Kutoka youth team and the national team, we along the way, we maybe have a ball and have a bit of zingine, have a bit of a bit of course, Lazima to be uh, uh, both education and sports. But yeah. again, Tunafanya enough kufall up kuona kwamba these players wana transition ya kutoka youth team baka senior team. Iko, iko so smooth hakuna. Yeah. And then uh, most of the times we have maybe the way to change players at the national team. Because mm -hmm. lazima pia hapa pia kuona consistency. It's not that maybe players wana come in, they are not good enough ama nini. But yeah. again, uh, ukiangalia um, top teams, top coaches, tunangalia wana fall up players unye wako national team. How they performing uh, at the club level? Una, una, mm -hmm. maybe kama form yake merudi chini, they will fall up. They'll make sure unacheza uko at the top. Kwa sababu uh, still ana mm -hmm. So tukiwa na consistency pia kwa selection ya players, unapata ina kwa somehow easier. Cause kama kila siku tuna bring in, kila mtu mpia, kila time tuna let in, maybe coach mingine, unapata consistency na kosa. Na unajua hapo, atunanga chance, mm -hmm. like tuna time ya kuprepare. Unapata, most of the time they have only two, three days in the, in the camp yeah. tunacheza game. Okay. So lazima tuipate right. I mean, I mean, I think he raises a very valid point, but uh, for us as my fans, when you are now me, sometimes we just want one problem pinpointed to deal now. Is it the problem? Is it the players? Is it the coach? Is it the federation? How many kill a kid? It's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of both from where I sit, and I'll just take it on from where my colleague and friend uh, Jen <laughs> left it. Yeah. Uh, football is no longer just entertainment. Football is serious uh, business. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have uh, seen on social media just the other day, uh, Victor Nyama earns in excess of $2 uh, million a year yeah. uh, in uh, Canada where he plays in the Major League Soccer. So uh, that's 200 million uh, uh, Kenya shillings salary per year 
200 million? 200 million Kenya shillings. That was uh, up by the official records of the MLS okay. released the salary of uh, the most uh, paid players. Mm -hmm. So uh, you look at it. You look at that as one footballer, one Kenyan footballer, based in America, bringing that money home for investment or to feed his family every year. And you will just sit back and wonder what if we can produce five to ten wanyamas every year uh, to go and play all over the world and bring back such income. So to come back to where the problem actually is, in my opinion, is that uh, all the stakeholders have not done their bit. The government has not done its bit to ensure that uh, uh, there is a conducive environment for players to be nurtured, for players to play football, for players to, for the national team to prosper. Uh, the football administrators have also failed us in a bit uh, to ensure that all that the government wants in terms of policy making is in place. And the players as well have not been offered a good environment yeah. to be able to exercise their talent. So to answer your question in a nutshell, everybody has not done its bit. You remember the number of promises uh, put across by this government when it was coming into place in terms of what is going to be done to ensure that there is a conducive environment for football and sports to nurture. You know about the, the five state of the art stadium. You know about um, <laughs> the, the possibility of Kenya hosting international engagements. Mm -hmm. You know about... Uh, the Sports Fund and the Sports Act to ensure that athletes and footballers are funded well enough to be able to compete. And uh, also uh, fr from the players' point of view, when the administration, the football administration, the government is not doing enough, then the players and also the corporates, uh, the corporates have lost interest in football as it is right now. There's mm -hmm. not much money uh, from blue chip companies getting yes. pumped into the game mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that uh, the environment is good to flourish. And that has uh, to, be, to be put on the government, not putting in enough policies and not ensuring that this happens. Because as it is right now, only yeah. betting firms are putting in money in football. But there are very many blue chip companies that make a lot of money that should be invested in sports because sports, 99% uh, of those who play sports are the youth. They're yeah. aged 35 uh, years and below. Uh, so, so that's the point. So the player who is the most important stakeholder uh, right now is suffering so much because all these people who are supposed to put everything in place yeah. ha have let down their guard. Okay. Questions, now that we agree that it's a, f I mean, a variety of issues, watch that one's in a Kwanzaa. Players. Villa squad yet to Yaran Bestazi go Sasaivi. Do you think that squad deserves to be in the African Cup of Nations or even the World Cup? Okay, um, let me start by saying I can't say uh, more than what they have just said because yeah. uh, you look at the issues that they are addressing, they are very important issues mm -hmm. and they are very issues that we, we as Kenyans, especially a person like me as a coach, as Tuma, who is uh, very key in this football. Yeah. Uh, we need to start discussing issues and then and 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 and, and then stop discussing people because you realize like Kwarima has said football now is an industry it's mm -hmm. a business it's a career for many and i believe where we have uh, gotten it uh, wrong is the youth mm -hmm. uh, 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 stuma has just said that uh, it's smooth but to me it's not smooth because you realize how many kenyan premier league today they have youth teams which are currently performing and doing well developing their developing talent for tomorrow talent. we don't have mm -hmm. we don't have and those who have they're just doing it because um, uh, there is a, a, a rule or there is a, a law that requires them, require to, do them to do that but mm -hmm. they are not doing it because they want to nurture talent why am i saying that we have various academies here in kenya cropping up and uh, stuma is aware that uh, i have an academy he has an academy i've tried to even to look for these uh, clubs uh, uh, kwalima to just partner with these clubs because what is the essence of the youth teams yeah. the youth teams that's where now we are going to develop a player from the early age 10 years 14 years with the correct skills mm -hmm. and the correct qualities because you realize uh, we can talk uh, much and then so much about the national team like you're asking because i'm coming there the squad is keeping changing. Why are we keeping changing it? It's because every coach will come and realize, no, I don't need Stuma in this position. Maybe mm -hmm. he doesn't have all the qualities that I need. Then he go for another person. Yes. So we need to, co to have complete players who can compete in, uh, in, in competitive leagues. And every coach will see. For example, if we take uh, super players like Mosala, who is, a, who is an African yeah. uh, from Egypt, every coach will want to use him because he has all the qualities. But that's where we are going wrong. So the youth... Uh, need to be checked and we need to address that issue for us to make our football better. Okay, back to my question. Yeah. Yes. Do they deserve to be in the African Cup of Nations? Uh, to me, they deserve. Mm -hmm. They deserve because uh, you realize uh, they have what, all what it takes. Mm -hmm. But like, like I said, you realize that uh, every coach will want to use a different player depending yeah. with his abilities and yeah. qualities. Yeah. Uh, so to me, if I check on the squad, I believe they are capable and they are capable of competing. Okay. Uh, but like I said, we don't need only to think about the players right now because we cannot, uh, of course, 
everyone knows that we cannot qualify right now mm -hmm. at the World Cup. So we need to get it right. And Kwarima has just said it, that all stakeholders need to come on board. We don't need to keep on discussing this player and that player. We need to discuss the real issues that are affecting our football. Because if you say today these players are not uh, uh, able to compete, then who is going to compete? Mm -hmm. So we need to make these players feel comfortable and feel okay to compete. Okay. Situma, come on, my player, see Shida. Coach and Shida. <laughs> <That'll> be, that, <laughs> I just go back to what uh, David said is that uh, you know everyone is, has, has to be involved you know it affects everyone it's like a, a vehicle yeah. lazima tyre zote zizunguke ne moje ki ikistall then awezi songa so it, it comes inatokea to top mpaka chini kwa kila mtu kama management is doing enough then the technical bench is doing enough the players has to to their they, to play their part so that we we perform you see mm -hmm. and the coach said you know we need more of the of the of the youth players because unajua that's the, that's the that's where by um chezaji anakuwa more developed anakuwa more like sharpened because mm -hmm. you know the national team you don't have a chance maybe to go there coach and could develop as i said yeah. 3 days in camp Akuna kitu coach atafanya naona when you come in camp uh, maybe the coach is more focused on the uh, tactical and technical aspect technical ni kiasi tu but most of the time ni tactical aspect cause okay. unaenda kucheza game umekuwa ukicheza unaona and then uh, swali inakuja inakuja ina, inakuja kwa clubs again unaona na inakuja maybe inatokea from the federation cause we have something like uh, club licensing unaona mm -hmm. this something like kama inaweza fuatwa into into details up to date mm -hmm. and then kila kitu inaweza kuwa okay hizi kuwa perfect but inaweza kuwa somehow cuz inasema lazima hizi club hizi kuna youth teams unaona ukiangalia mara mingi club zetu hazina hata fiscal address unaona mm -hmm. kuna teams zenye zinalipa wachezaji kwa kwa gari then what happens unapewa so mbili ukienda eh, unaona <laughs> wewe well, ukutana na chema na ama nani kwa gari wewe unaona so lazima wakati. professionalism inaanzia pale kama hatuwezi kuwa kama hatuwezi kuwa somehow tukwe strict ama tukwe somehow tight kwa hizi clubs yeah. it affect to the national it akuja tumbaka up to the national level you know kwalima was actually trying to separate this conversations that we start with yes. the national team and we come back to the league but it looks like we cannot we can we uh, cannot separate to, to, to some extent we can if we can just break up down because you mentioned about the 2022 Africa Cup of Nations yeah. and the 2022 uh, FIFA World Cup mm -hmm. if we look at the 2022 uh, Africa Cup of Nations uh, where where Kenya was pulled alongside Egypt uh, Togo and Comoros and of course came third uh, in the group with Egypt and Comoros uh, getting the qualification campaign uh, most of the players that represented the national team at these are uh, two tournaments and also the FIFA World Cup qualifiers that are ongoing right now but Kenya is already yeah. eliminated. Mm -hmm. uh, most of these players uh, are making the grade at club level because if you look at probably the Kenyan, uh, former Kenyan champions, Gormaya, yeah. they've had a good run in the continental mm -hmm. uh, campaigns. Despite these challenges, they've yeah. gotten to the group stage, the quarterfinals of the continental championships, which means there is talent. Most of these players in the Gormaya team are Kenyans. Yeah. Uh, there are Kenyans uh, doing good all over the country, all over the continent, all over the world. Uh, uh, at the top of my mind, I can mention Antonio Kumu playing for Kaiser Chiefs in South Africa. Mm -hmm. You don't play for that team by chance. You have to have some talent. I mm -hmm. mean, the Kenyans uh, who have been uh, nominated as among the best players in Africa, like Jesse Were, he was nominated some three or four years ago as among the best players. He's, he's in the Zambian League. He's been the top scorer, I think, for the last three or four seasons. That's top talent. Mm -hmm. With Kenyans in Morocco, and Morocco is a, is a, is a huge and professional league. Okay. Uh, uh, with Michael Olunga in, in Qatar. Before he was in Qatar, he was in Japan was the top scorer he was among the best players in the Asian uh, Champions League and the top scorer so the talent is there uh, but 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 why is it that now when all these players are put together they can't perform yeah. and deliver for the national team now that that's the question that needs to be asked and on top of my mind I can pick one spot if mm -hmm. you look at the last qualification uh, campaign yeah. where Kenya was against Egypt Comoros and uh, Togo Kenya, Egypt, uh, Comoros and Togo to qualify for the Africa Cup of Nations yes I mean we had I think two or three coaches in that campaign, you saw six exactly. matches. Yes, exactly. I was actually coming to that. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. So, so six matches. Uh, that's uh, that's at home to Egypt and in Alexandria. I think uh, uh, Francis Kimanzi was in charge, uh, and then uh, Jacob Gostumle came in between. So, so, so there are a lot of changes that come into play, and uh, and and when these changes come into play, when another coach comes, he comes in with his philosophy, he comes in with his players, he yeah. comes in with his mentality. Mm -hmm. So before the team picks, yeah. uh, uh, there's, there's already an issue, and probably out of the campaign. If you can just let me finish this, and then we get into the fifth 
FIFA World Cup qualifiers, yeah. where which was the most disappointing from Kenyans, and this yeah. is where probably the hue and cry has come from, sure. yeah. where Kenya was pulled up against Uganda, Rwanda, Togo, with all due respect. Uganda and Rwanda uh, 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 should not be causing so much of a problem to Kenya. Kenya has more, much more talent, much more resources than mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. But what happens after two games against Uganda and Rwanda and Kenya fails to get a win, then there's another change of coach. Uh, Jacob goes to Mule goes out. Engine yeah. Firat comes in. He starts afresh. We are beaten 6-0 by Mali on aggregate, as you just put it. Yeah. So the constant changing and, and the lack of, 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 of an ideal game plan of how we are going to go through this challenge is part of the problem. But I refuse to believe that we don't have talent in Kenya. We have so much talent. Okay. Yeah. Uh, coaches, I, do, I want to go to Bonnie, but before I do, how much of a concern is it to you? Considering, first of all, most of these uh, players spend much of their time with their team, with their clubs. So you only get, as, as, as David mentioned, Nikama, th three days of training. But even that three days, you still want to change coaches in between. Uh, yes, that's where we are getting it wrong, especially in our league. Because if we make our league better, then of course the national team will be better. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, I want to uh, chip into what uh, Kualima has just said about philosophy. Every coach has his own philosophy. But as a country, as a league, we must have our own philosophy as well. Because you realize that today, if a Kenya, if you were to talk of Kenyan football, the yeah. Harambe stars, for yeah. example, what the philosophy that we have? What are, what, what are these structures that we have when a coach comes can be able to fit in our own uh, philosophy, mm -hmm. in our own structure? So we need, to, we need to start realizing that's where we are getting it wrong. Because if a coach comes, a coach might change his own philosophy, but he won't change the philosophy of the team itself mm -hmm. because you realize uh, 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 coach's philosophy is more of how we are going to play or how we are going to tackle. But there are other things that are involved for our players to perform better, and that is our own philosophy. Okay. Uh, so it is very important. And uh, back to what you've just asked about the league, that's where we are getting it wrong because our clubs are suffering. We don't have managers in those clubs. So once we don't have managers in those clubs, we are not uh, bringing up or we are not giving complete players to a national team. Okay. And if we give up a complete player, then side, uh, the, the, the issues around him, there are so yeah. many, he cannot yeah. even perform. I know Setuba wants to respond, but <laughs> <laughs> allow me to bring in Boni because he has really waited. Boni face. Boni, Mambo Vepe, good morning. Good morning, sir. Boni, unaniskia vizuri sana? Yeah, I'm getting you loud and clear. Habari asubui? Jema sana, labda wewe. Freshi kabisa. The biggest challenge I have as a, as a fan is there are days I used to follow our football really closely. The, the days of Musa Otienui, the days of Tom Juma, the days of Boniface Ambani. Watu wanajuliza ni nini ilikuwa inafanya kazi kitambu ambaya ifanyi kazi so hivi? Uh, let me just be sincere. Um, <laughs> At the moment, uh, I think you have killed our football. Uh, if any, anybody's out there he thinks that uh, there's football in Kenya, then definitely there's nothing that's happening in Kenya. Whatever you're just doing uh, currently, what Tanzania wana sema yoni bonanza, nacheza bonanza. People, uh, to me, there's no football in Kenya. Whoever thinks that there's football in Kenya, then is, uh, I think, uh, is on the wrong path. He doesn't know, or she doesn't know what's uh, what's football. Boni, uh, that's a very strong statement. Allow me to hold you there. When you say we have killed football, what do you mean we have killed football? The federation itself and the cronies of the federation have killed this football. Because yeah? uh, I think that people, there are guys, they are in office. Uh, just because uh, people are supposed to be in office, but they do not understand what actually uh, football means. Mm -hmm. So much that comes uh, to football. Uh, let's just, uh, let me touch on the, the issue of the national team first. Yeah. You know, when a country, a country's strength in football is measured by the strength of its national team. Mm -hmm. You see where Arambe Stars is at the moment. It's nowhere. It's, it's, it's just nowhere in football. Uh, there's so much that's being done wrongly, and uh, we cannot sit down and just watch things happening here. Uh, look at look at it this way: from the naming of the national team coach, you don't do you don't just uh, name national team coach randomly the way you think. Because yeah? mm -hmm. what you are supposed to do, I uh, just had Coach uh, Njogu saying that uh, you have we have philosophy and we have the culture, we have our tradition. You look at all those things that uh, we have before you get a coach in. But uh, do we do that? Mm -hmm. But Nick Mwendo and his cronies just sit down and decide, okay, fine, you are bringing in this one. No interview done, no nothing, no shortlisting, no telling Kenyans 
that that guy who came does he actually even understand our philosophy does he even understand what the kenyan football is those are some of the things that are, we are doing wrong and then second number two you cannot just be naming a national team. You call players. Players are called the national team on merits, not just because a phone call. My coach called me, the coach called the other coach. I said, hey, please, I have, I have players that uh, I need to be in the national team. I want to tell you to tell these players. There's nothing like testing players. You just say, football, um, the national team, you don't come there to be taught how to control or how to pass. The national team, just you have to get the right players, the best players. That's the best. Because you only have maybe two, two or three, four days to, uh, to to prepare, you cannot start coming and start saying, "Oh, my friend, you know, you didn't." Uh, no, my friend, you have to get the best. You don't just get the national team players just to uh, and any players from each and every uh, any club just to get them cups. You know, that's because maybe you want to do business as players. So that's the most. Uh, the, that's what skill in Kenyan football. I remember during our days, my friend, before you get that cup, before you are called the national team. My friend, it, it, you know, like me, when I was called the national team, you know, I, I, I wondered, is it, is it me or what? Because I was looking uh, up on other players who are just excellent, so excellent players, but I, I had to prove myself. You go to the national team, I, was, I had to go and prove myself. So each and every player used to prove himself in the national team. And before he proves himself in the national team, he had proved himself in the club level. So you try to imagine, how do you call a player in camp who has been on bench throughout in his uh, in his club and then you call him where's the match fitness yeah? okay where's the confidence okay so those are some of the things that i'll tell you uh, my friend uh, this football it's is is a walking skeleton Bonnie, before you, without even getting into specifics, I mean, I would argue and say Michael Olunga is doing a very good job in, in Qatar, and, and I would still argue that Marcelo Eric is doing a very brilliant job. They surely deserve to be in that lineup. So, where does the issue of uh, it's like you're not in the team because of merit come in? Michael Olunga, you remember, uh, yes, fine, he's doing well wherever he is. I remember. Uh, Football as a striker, it yeah. all all depends to the kind of players you are playing with. Yeah? Uh -huh. So Nicol Lunga, I should say that uh, look when he comes to the national team, what what kind of players is he surrounded? Mm -hmm. He's a striker. Uh, so up from there, what kind of players is he surrounded? With? The issue of changing the coaches of the national team each and every now and then it's it's a big problem. These players should, uh, should be together. The issue of a national team calling and a national team coach calling almost 50 players in camp, and you only have three or four or five days to go to, uh, for, for a match. Okay, it shows you actually. Yeah, because what uh, what I believe in it's a coach. Let's give a coach good time. Mm -hmm. Let him prepare him. Yeah. Once he prepares him, he'll have he'll now have a provision of around 30 players. Mm -hmm. So he'll just be working within that provision of 30 players. So these 30 players will definitely, and they should be the la cream of Kenyan football, not just uh, calling players just to please uh, the coach from other teams or please a manager from another team. No. So that these players, they get used to one another. Each okay. and every time you know you're you going to come. For, for example, Olunga comes here. When he comes here, he gets all a different setup of players. What do you expect? Okay. Thank you, Bonnie. You want, you want to perform? He can't perform. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Uh, gentlemen, allow me to come back to you because, of course, we've all agreed on the issue of changing coach frequently and everything. But really, I mean, I would argue that, um, I mean, even Tottenham fired their coach the other day. They are trying to salvage the situation than wait until it's, it's too late. Okay, they did that. But uh, again, uh, you know, Spurs uh, are structures and the setup is totally different. Mm -hmm. From the maybe from the national team, you know that's a team that has been there. That's a squad that has been there. Remember, they they just did uh, some few additional to the team, some new a uh, few signings to the team. Yeah. But the, na the national team, as, as Bonnie said, you know you need to have uh, um, quality all the time, you mm -hmm. know, because tunakuja uh, tunacheza, tunayenda. Tunakuja tunacheza kuna Africa Cup of Nation qualification. We have World Cup qualification. No, no, no. So you don't have that much time. But again, uh, maybe uh, you know for. 
I will, dis- I will disagree with him na yeah. kusema kwamba football Kenya hakuna cause mm-hmm. football iko mm-hmm. ni vile atufanye vizuri mm-hmm. no, na, so this is not the lowest we have seen no, 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 before no, 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 no. <laughs> football iko kwa sababu tunacheza players mm-hmm. wako ukiangalia mm-hmm. the moment hata kuna wachezaji umetaja like Marcelo yeah. um, you have Abudo Mar you have Olunga they are doing well so ina maanisha nini we have, we have players we have talents mm-hmm. yeah? and ukiangalia vizuri from history ukiangalia Mugabe amecheza Victor amecheza top teams around the around the world ukiangalia yeah. Magnola Mariga the only player in East Africa African countries ameshinda Champions League so mm-hmm. we have talent ziko mm-hmm. like in the way maybe to us bring up the way to make sure to na follow because at the national team you know we we need to do a lot at the national team mm-hmm. no it's not about maybe just calling players or playing and maybe winning games because yeah. okay these players same to the club you know uh, as a club maybe you have a club it's not performing well lazima muangalie wapi atupati kitu right wachezaji wamezembea management haifanyi right ama wachezaji tu maybe fitness yao iko, iko chini mm-hmm. lazima mfollow up the same thing the same thing to the national team these players after playing to the, for the national team they go back to the clubs yeah. what happens after wakati wanacheza lazima tukue na watu wenye wana follow up to these players they mm-hmm. make sure wanacheza pia vizuri form yao imerudi china ama iko juu do we have that atuna na pia uh, the duration vile amesema ndagree na eh, the way uh, tuna change uh, coaches it yeah. can't work and one thing miss jaya elewa mm-hmm. even the previous coaches when you talk from maybe when you meenda okay acha acha niongele recently mm-hmm. kimanzi when left atukujua what happened yeah unaona so still at the problem ni gani previous juzi juzi hapa ghost left hajai sema what happened yeah. so si unajua kuje tunaongea lakini hatujua ni reason ni unajua of course kama pia wanaweza kuwa na kama hapo nasema this is the problem yeah. nilijaribu ku sort out this na haikuwezekana mm-hmm. pia tunajua tunajua unajua pia wilan yeah. tunaweza badilisha lakini wanatoka quietly hatujua ngine nilifanyika coach mwingine anakuja anapewa 2 months yeah. alafu kiangalia maybe pia the time tulifanya changes ilikuwa pia naweza sema kwamba haikuwa right time kwa sababu kiangalia okay already tulikuwa out of the of the contention yes. so, so maybe tungengoja up to the end of the qualifiers mm-hmm. then you have to sit down and prepare well remember when uh, german won the world cup 20 uh, 2014 Eighteen, 2014 or 18 14 2014, 2014 yeah. i think uh, in in brazil yes ukiangalia vizuri walikuwa hawajafanya for long like almost 10 years walikuwa hawajafanya vizuri at the national at the national level what happened they went back to the youth structures they come up with, they came up with the culture yeah. the style of play they came up with the a youth structure ukiangalia okay, that team ilikuwa pamoja for almost 5 6 years wakakuja wakashinda world cup so we, we st- come, if you want to jump further yeah. far lazima upige steps kama yeah. upiga mbili na uweze enda yeah. piga 3 4 nyuma na uende mbele so okay. we just need to come up tukae chini tuangalie where where do we need to go na tuangalie how can we do it unaona mm-hmm. lazima tukam up na structures na tukue patience kwa sababu kama tutakuwa na kuruka icon leo nikikosa ni nimechukua devi devi akikosa amechukua coach njogu then inakuwa ni problem yeah. so lazima is something that we really need to plan na to take time even if it will take us 3 4 5 years na tufike mm-hmm. wacha tuchukue that long route yeah. na tufike like unlike kuchukua short shortcuts yeah. na tuweze fika uh, wacha nileta very controversial situation here. so on one hand you have countries which perform very well in africa some of them include ghana nigeria and the perception sometimes is they have almost their first 11 playing in European leagues but unapata pia kuna team dogo ndogo kama not ndogo in, 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 in but they don't have so many players out there like Zambia I think I, I only know of Dakar and a few other guys but the rest of them were to Africa South Africa hapo Zambia and they performed well I think they actually won the Afcon was it 2012 or somewhere around yeah. there so shida iko wapi because the perception sometimes is lazima tuko na wale ma superstar wa Premier League the drug buzz the wanyama of this world most countries that uh, do perform well most african countries that do perform well on uh, uh, on in, in continental assignments uh, their administrators are answerable mm-hmm. for the results mm-hmm. uh, in zambia has a footballing culture yeah. as far back as 1988 i think kalusha bwale was the best player in africa hey, kalusha bwale and uh, he played for psv eindhoven and he had a very good uh, campaign in europe so they have this culture of football uh, I, i was in zambia i think in 2014 with situma for the kosafa games when kenya was a guest team and 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 i can tell you that uh, zambia is a footballing nation everybody breathes football they love the game and if the uh, football association of zambia first the equivalent of football kenya federation here uh, if the national team does not perform 
uh, Fuzz is in big problems with the fans, with the government, and, and they really have to, 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 to ensure that they deliver or they go home. The, 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 the margin of failure uh, or the consequences that come with the national team not performing are very high. Yeah. So, so, so there are some challenges that, like the ones that Boniface are brought about uh, the national team. In Kenya, for example, you have 47, 48 million people. Yeah. If you're going to select 30, 30, 30 players to represent the national team for an assignment, the least you can do is to uh, identify the 30 best people available for that duty. Mm -hmm. you, you cannot play around with that. Uh, that's why uh, Boni, as a former national team player, is telling you that uh, if you call up a player at the national team, a player who's not played for six months, actively yeah. but you're calling him for the national team and you want him to play against a team like mali which you're saying has top cream talent yeah and then that player if that player delivers then you're now off Malizwa. the hook if he does not deliver then you have some very pertinent questions to answer now if you call five to six players who have not played for six months or yeah. who are not as sure starters in the kenyan premier league yeah. at the expense of players who've been playing consistently and probably who have a pre pedigree and then these players fail to deliver. That's when now these noises come up. So to answer your questions, uh, Ghana, for them to get into that situation where they're the world beaters, they're four-time African uh, champions, they have the likes of Michael Essie and Thomas Pate, uh, the Ayu brothers in, in the frame, then they must be doing something right in terms of structures that the coach has put it earlier. Yeah. And the national team performances, because the government pumps in a lot of money. If you've been reading uh, or watching the news in the recent times, I mean, yeah. the government of Kenya is putting in at least 300 million shillings into football per year. Now, somebody has to be accountable for that money in terms of the results. Now, if the results are not commensurate to the investment yeah. in Ghana, somebody will probably be gone because their former president, you remember, uh, the former president of the Ghana FA, yeah. he was just hounded out because of poor performance and lack of accountability. Okay. Is this a very valid point about investment into and resources into, into football? 300 million coaches. Is this enough? Is this too little? Is this sufficient? Because for a very long time, the conversation has always been, ah, Serikali, I wake pesa into sports. Mm. Uh, that's a good one, and uh, you allow me first to uh, respond. Yeah. To respond and, 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 and agree uh, with uh, Situma yeah. and disagree with uh, Boni. Mm -hmm. uh, our football is not dead. Mm -hmm. if you say that, and uh, I am seated here. Then I'm, and uh, the, the, uh, Boni is a very important or key person in, in our football. If he says comfortably our football is dead, then uh, we, we must we must uh, address where we are wrong and, yeah. and, and address also where we are right and yeah. see where we are going because uh, you talk of uh, a national team we cannot gauge uh, like he said uh, uh, that uh, hundred uh, percent if our national team is, is not performing then we are not doing well we have to gauge our football with the national team yes but also with our leagues and our youth uh, our youth structures mm -hmm. you cannot just join the three so it is very important and and back to your question where you're asking about investment this is where we are also getting it very wrong yeah. because you realize our teams are, are, are suffering for example a big clubs two big clubs in kenya gorma here afc leopards a player goes six months unpaid goes three months unpaid what do you expect and then that player we set him to the national team of course he won't perform because the issues that he has come with in the national yeah. team are yeah. dire and yeah. they are important to him. So that's where we are getting it wrong. The government, the corporate he had mentioned, they need to invest in our football yeah. for us to get it right. Okay. I really have to go for a break. But before I do, I think Bonnie is itching to respond before with that break and our feedback. Bonnie, click quickly. You know, Stuma and Jogu, I, I don't understand if they did literature in school, yeah? Because if they did literature, then they might, they, they'll understand what I mean. Jogu is contradicting himself here. He's saying the, Gormaya and Evs Lopez, there's a big problem there. Huh? And then he comes and says the football is not dead. Yeah. When I say football is dead, I don't mean that uh, at, it's just... My friend, get the context. It's literature. This football is not where it was. Jogu, he understands very well. And he knows very well. So I don't know then your, your words football. should be that our football is doing badly? It's doing badly. That's what <laughs> is. It, it's, it's a simple mm -hmm. you can you, you can't come, in, you can't come here in the studio. Yeah. You are a, a director, Jogu. You are a director in football. Yeah. And then you come here and start, start massaging people's ego. No, Jogu, just say the way it is. Let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, let, let's come to the registration. The teams are reg uh, uh, registering down here mm -hmm. with more than 30, 40, 50,000 shillings. 
but they are receiving nothing. They have to pay for, they have to pay the referees, they have to pay for the match commissars, they have to pay for the grounds, they have to do everything for themselves. And the federation is not there. Was it when before? Let, let's go back to the before uh, the regimes that were there before. The federation is to pay for these things. The federation is to pay referees. There's a lot of match fixing just because now the club, the home clubs, have to pay the referees. They have to pay for the accommodation. They have to pay for everything. So when Njogu sits here and is the director and is telling Kenyans, actually, oh, Situma is there, is a Kefua chairman, and he knows exactly what's happening in Kenyan football. Then he's on TV uh, trying to massage people's ego. I don't understand. Bo Bonnie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Call a spade a spade, not, not just to, trying to, to, to do things that, uh, to say things on TV just to please people. No, my friends, it's, it's there. And they are, they, are, they are seeing it. I, I think this money. conversation is, is becoming very much interesting and both uh, Situma and Jogo want to respond, but really we have to take this break. Allow me to just see <laughs> what Kenyans or social media are saying because they are also part of this conversation. We cannot lock them out. But clearly, uh, let me just see first of all what they are saying. The question was, according to you, what do you think has gone wrong with Kenyan football? We have John Tez who says, Kenya have very, very exciting football talents. We need to put up the right structures to nurture these talents and provide the necessary resources to develop the players. We should be having approved academies in every region and FIFA approved stadia in every region. Thank you, John. I think that's a very valid point. We'll make sure we address that. Um, oh, of course, John continues to say, hold tournaments in every region after a stipulated period of time. Come up with a structure of top clubs and scouts of, on young players. In coaching schools, encourage our retired players to enroll anyone who is interested to learn coaching and start their careers in academies very comprehensive from john Tez right there let's get to see what john ticulet says until when football talent will be nurtured all over the country that's when we will have good change so many talents who kunje but fkf does not does doesn't give it a trial thank you john Tiz. and we have dalpo daniel and asema corruption tribalist tribalistic segregation and incompetency at the helm oh and overlooking Failures. Thank you for your feedback, Dalpo. Quite a lot of you actually sending this. Ladizo Boni says corruption. We'll ask ourselves what do they mean by corruption. And Timoteo Wanasema, the, the problem is selecting players from the same region. Thank you, Timoteo. Uh -huh. Gitao Ahmed Wanasema, number one, management. Number two, management. Number three, management. Thank you. I think he's straight to the point. Timoteo is back and he says, what? <laughs> Surely, Timoteo, we are trying to stay serious and on course for this conversation. That's the last part of the feedback that we have. We have to go for a quick break. But since our national team is not performing well, and we have all agreed that our national team performance has something to do with how our league is doing, then we come back and ask ourselves, how is our league doing then? Don't go too far. One stop sourcing solution has made our back end operations more efficient. Sandy has helped us to focus on growing our business and serving our customers better. Wow, Susie, you come one day. 
yule dem tulikuwa tunaambiwa mm. nasikia wanamshughulikia everything ATM zake credit card zake 247 that means wanamlipa hata bill zake pia <laughs> KRA NHIF UEFA nafanywa zote akiwa ametulia tu hivi nasikia hiyo katu hivi the whole day kwa tablet akifanywa kila kitu lakini no wonder business yake ime grow hivyo eh lazima kuna bank yake special with Mcoop cash your banking team is at your fingertips visit www.coopbank.co.ke click on internet banking select personal banking and sign up for free. Did you know at Riru Mabati Factory we offer free delivery within the same day? Did you know at Riru Mabati Factory you can open an account and lipa pole pole at your convenience? Did you know at Riru Mabati Factory you can get customized sizes according to your roof plan to avoid wastage? Call us now on 0111050700. Riru Mabati Factory. Mali safi kwa bei poa. Step to the right one time to the left then pull Hmm turn the reverse <laughs> Don't go I'm good time Oh when me feel a share I not done so I see you came to party Yes Kadunda Kadibu Kanairo Karibu Kenya Kujani kushova cuz our Kenya It's feeling good feeling proud Hi, what's up, beautiful people? This is your girl, Nadia Mukami, a.k.a. The African Popstar. And you're watching Kwetu Mix, Dania NTV. Keep it locked, straight up. Habari wa Kenya, mimi ni wenu Vivian na leo hii ningependa mpate huo wimbo wangu wa Nioneshe. It's very simple. Bonyeza star 811 star 934 hash. Star 811 star 934 hash. Skiza na nation supporting local talent. Asante. Beautiful pictures of River Tackle there. You're watching your world on NTV and we are having a major conversation on the state of Kenyan football this moment and we are dissecting everything from a 360 degree. And of course with me in studio for this conversation, David Kualimu is a sports journalist with the National Media Group. My colleague here is still with me. James Situma is a former Harambe Stars player and, a, and the chairman of the Kenya Football Welfare Association. As well in studio with me is John Jogu, uh, the football coach and director of the Ruiru Sports Academy. And joining us virtually this morning is Boniface Ambani, a former Harambe Stars for a gentleman I really want to move on, but allow each one of you 20 seconds to respond, and then we can move on. Okay. Uh, maybe I just want to respond to, to Boni. Uh, yeah. And still I say, uh, football is Jakufa. Yes. Tunafanya vibaya, yeah. but he's Jakufa. Because mm -hmm. ukiangalia, tukusema football is dead, and as we speak, teams are in the training grounds, wana train, coaches, wana develop talents, wana mm -hmm. do atuko 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 sinzi, ani vile tunafanya vibaya, yeah. but uh, we need to make sure, nini tuneza fanya right, tuipate, tuipate right. Boni yeah. mwenye wako in business, ya yeah, sports. Mm -hmm. Izi sports kama ni hizo jerseys, na nina wuzia nini teams, mm -hmm. which means na trade, mm -hmm. ziko. So, mm -hmm. ni football liko, mm -hmm. but hatufanya vizuri. So, mm -hmm. lazima to come on the drawing board to make sure tuneza pata nini, neza pata nini right. But, as, as we speak, ukiangalia even clubs, confederation, Goromaya saizo meshinda, which mm -hmm. means kuna something inafanyika, lakini yeah. hatufanya enough, kuna maali link haiko I, I, ina, inafike na katika. So lazima to make sure iko pamoja, yeah. then we move forward. Yeah. Coaches. Uh, good, uh, Stuma has just said it well, and of course uh, even Bonnie, a merry phrase statement, like I said, we are badly off, yeah. but we are not dead. Yeah. And that, that was my stand, yeah. because if you say we are dead, yeah. uh, today we have uh, 25 coaches doing mm -hmm. FP, mm -hmm. I'm one of them. Yeah. We have... Uh, 
another class of 25 coaches who will start another CAF B. Yeah. We have over 300 coaches. Today, they have done CAF D, CAF C. Yeah. So if we say we are dead, then why are these coaches getting to class? Mm -hmm. They are getting to, cl to class to yeah. ensure that they are developing talents and exactly what to my saying. Okay. One area that was missing is the, is the coaching department. Mm -hmm. That area was in dire need. Yeah. And it, it is being addressed. Yeah. If we address that one, that's, what, that's a plus. Mm -hmm. So we start addressing other areas, it will be two, uh, another plus. Yeah. And that's how we are going to grow football. But we okay. cannot sit and yeah. say we are dead. Okay. But, but, but really, um, I mean, I sort of uh, kind of understand as a frustrated fan because even after all these things of not going for AFCO, not going to the World Cup, you wake up and you're told um, the only two uh, very important uh, stadiums that we have, Kasorani and Nyayo, cannot even hold an international uh, match. And if our teams want to play, they have to probably go maybe to Tanzania or Uganda. Polimo, is this right, first of all, as a sports journalist? It's, it's very frustrating. Yeah. Uh, it's very frustrating because... But is it correct that the fact that our teams might now have to play outside? Uh, what is factual for now yeah. is that uh, Nyayo Stadium and uh, the more international sports center, Kasarani, do lack some basic amenities yeah. uh, required to host an international match. So yeah. the Confederation of African Football and FIFA, who are the tournament organizers, have said that, listen, uh, these uh, remaining two matches, uh, between the, the remaining one match between Kenya and Rwanda, I think next week, yeah. is the last match that you're going to host. And you're not going to host any international match. That is, Kenya is not going to host any international match at these two venues yeah. up until you put up these things. I think the stadium, like Nyaya Stadium, lacks uh, the floodlights. Yeah. It lacks a media tribunal. It lacks uh, a standard uh, dressing rooms and such, such, such basic amenities. The Kasarani as well. But the emotional part of this for the fan, as you say, is that uh, the government has pumped in so much. Let's not even start with how much the government has pumped in. Yeah. Let's start with the, the government of President Uru Kenyatta and Deputy President William Ruto, which is now nine years in office, promised Kenyans that we're going to have good stadiums. Nine stadiums. Stadia. Yeah, nine stadiums and state-of-the-art uh, stadiums that should be good enough to host international assignments and tournaments. Now, yeah. all these things have a criteria. Now, up until now, there's not one single stadium that has been constructed that meets this requirement. Mm -hmm. Now, the government has put in a lot of money to renovate the existing stadiums. Now, that is still not enough. So from that aspect, uh, the Jubilee uh, government has failed completely yeah. uh, to ensure that there is enough infrastructure, sports infrastructure, yeah. for players to, uh, to expose their talent mm -hmm. and to exercise their talent and earn a living. So that's yeah. the government's uh, failure for that part, mm -hmm. uh, judging from the CAF community. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, get, get, getting to the, to, to the other side, uh, the federation part, uh, when the government says it wants to renovate a stadium, yeah. uh, uh, the federation knows too well what is needed. So the federation of Kenya should work hand in hand with the government to say, listen, if you're going to renovate Nyaya Stadium, for example, if you're going to close Nyaya Stadium for three years yeah. to renovate it, these are the basic amenities that need to be done. You have to have floodlights, you have to have this, you have to have this, you have to have it to this standard, the pitch is supposed to be to this standard, so that the government does not spend 600 million shillings on Nyaya Stadium for example, as it did, and then after closing the stadium for three years and, and renovating it, yeah. we find out that it's still not good enough. Yeah. So that three years and that 600 million <laughs> becomes more or less a waste. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so it was a big problem, and, yeah. and, 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 and that is the dynamic of actually what goes wrong. It shows you yeah. that, uh, that the fish is probably rotting from the head. Uh, I mean, uh, coaches, you, you're a coach and you deal with talent every day. From a resource perspective, for a country that does not have an international stadium that meets international standards, do you, if you look at the breeding environment right now, do you think it is resource-wise the right breeding environment to get the Olungas and Wanyamas of tomorrow? Uh, 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 allow me first to go back a little bit. Remember yeah. someone talked about academies and yeah. uh, that was very important to me because I, uh, I deal with uh, yeah. youth, uh, youth teams. Eh? Uh, he said it so well that we need academies yeah. to be accredited and to have FIFA standards yeah. whereby we are able now to partner with clubs mm -hmm. and give them talent. Ah, was, so this and, is where the, talent, the clubs point. source and their that talent? that my point. Yeah. If, if today, and I give an example, uh, uh, Bidico United, who are closer to me, partner with the Rural Sports Academy, we are able to have these players getting even training from Bidico coaches. Yeah. Are, are you getting? Mm -hmm. They're able to play knowing very well, in future, I might join Bidico. So mm -hmm. you, keep, you motivate the kid when he's 10 years, yeah. when he's 5 years, mm -hmm. he starts knowing where he's going, and that's why we are getting it uh, uh, wrong. Yeah. Today we have very few academies which are accredited. Yeah. And uh, 
that's why I said we need to give uh, credit where it's due. Yeah. The FKF, they have started, you know, accrediting academies. Yeah. Something has, uh, that has not happened before. Yeah. And uh, coming to your point uh, yeah. uh, about the stadia, yeah. these, are, these are very, uh, another dire need that we have here in Kenya. Yeah. And that is not about uh, uh, federation alone. It's about the government. Mm -hmm. It's about the corporates. Yeah. It's about, uh, 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 you know, other uh, stakeholders in football to give us what, what, uh, what we rightfully deserve. Yeah. Because a country without a stadium yeah. where we can say this stadium is fit for FIFA games, yeah. then we are... We, we, and and, we, and we your, are, your, your, your team is in Kiambu County, yeah, yeah. right? Because yeah. the county governments nowadays do these things. Yeah. Do you think there are enough facilities in the counties, in Machakos, in Kiambu, in Kajiado? Uh, to be honest, yeah. in my county, yeah. we don't have. Yeah. And that's where we are getting it wrong. Yeah. Because if each and every governor, yeah. or each or if and every county yeah. have one stadium, yeah. they will have 47 of them. Yeah. And I'm very sure... We, we seated here. We know the resources are quite enough yeah. for each and every county to give, what, to give us one stadium yeah. that is FIFA standard. Okay. So that's where we are getting it wrong. Okay. If we can get it right there, then of course our football will keep on going up. Okay. Uh, Bonnie, but earlier, before that break, we agreed that if we can get it right in terms of the league, then we can get it right with the national team. Maybe from where you sit, what's the biggest challenge right now facing um, the league and the teams uh, and the players in, in the Kenyan Premier League? I think before I respond to that, uh, let me let, let me get back yeah. to the issue of stadiums. Yeah. Uh, uh, if Njogu's mind uh, uh, serves him well, I think I was with him in the studio with the Kualima and uh, Nick Mwendwa when we lost Chan. Yeah. I bisected those guys. Njogu he told Kenyans, we are going to host Chan. The president also told Kenyans we're going to host Chan. I told them we are not going to host Chan. Mm -hmm. And I gave them reasons as to why you're not going to host Chan. I gave them the specifics that a stadium, an international stadium, a stadium that has to host a tournament, yeah. what it requires. Mm -hmm. It was three, six months to, uh, be, uh, to to us hosting it when uh, we had uh, that conversation. And it's on, this, on, on the same channel yeah. in TV. If you remember as well, I don't know if you remember as well. Mm -hmm. I told them we are not going to host, and I told them the reason as to why. Did we host Chan? No, we never hosted Chan. Mm -hmm. So, Jogu, uh, again, let me challenge you. When you leave uh, the studio, kindly go and uh, do a research of uh, what soccer academies are. We do not have anything like soccer academies in Kenya. We only have training centers in Kenya where people come and group up and train and go home. Go and do some good research and you will understand what soccer academies are. And then from there, uh, we can talk. We are friends. You can talk uh, on the sidelines. Uh, otherwise, when it comes to the league, yeah. Kenyan Premier, the Kenyan League, uh, they're going through tough moments at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's very tough. The sponsors are off. Uh, you'll agree with me, when Super Sports was there, we, it was marketing Kenyan football so well. Yeah. But at the end of the day, what happened? The same, same uh, federation, Olivruga Super Sports, and then they had to leave. They say they're coming up with uh, their own station. Where is it? It was just a station to save on money, and uh, that's it. They say they're coming to the studio that will be running... Uh, uh, football in this country, we'll be showing football you know, at, uh, on our channels. Where is it? So, uh, guys, let's, let, let's always be ready to say what's wrong in Kenyan football rather than trying to pamper people here and there. Yeah, the coaches are being trained. I'm also, I also trained. Yeah? But uh, the coaches who are being trained, uh, where are they? Mm -hmm. uh, where are they? Joe was talking about... Uh, uh, those centers the FKF that has come with. Uh, what has he actually gone deep and to, to know exactly what's happening? I'm in grassroots. I'm so much involved in grassroots football. I'm so much involved down here, uh, yeah. and I move up in Kenya. I am. I'm not just stationed in Nairobi. You see, my schedule is. I have so tight schedules that I have to move. I'm doing it because. I want to understand actually what's happening in Kenya football. So there's so much that uh, is going wrong. Yeah. So much, but we cannot sit down and say everything everything is well. 
Uh, I remember those days we used to play play football. We used to maybe leave uh, Nairobi, uh, no, uh, maybe Western province to Nairobi a day before a match. And yeah. we spend a day in Nairobi and we play a match. But right, right now, you know what clubs are going through. Mm-hmm. The clubs travel money. They arrive in Nairobi, they look for somewhere to maybe to shower and relax and look for where they... Then they play in the evening. Yeah. And then after the match, again, they're on the road, they're going back. Is that what we want to... So, for, but for Bonnie, when, when you talk about a team traveling on the same day and playing the same day, is this a challenge of resources? It's a challenge of resources, definitely. Because, mm-hmm. you know, before, at least those guys, the, 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 the league had sponsors. So yeah. those sponsors, at least something that was coming out from the sponsors that was actually helping these teams to cover for some of their ex- expenses. Yeah. So it's quite uh, it's quite challenging to those to those clubs. And uh, that one, uh, I should say, also the clubs will style up. They yeah. should wake up, because at the end of the day, the buck stops at the chairman, okay. at the chairman uh, of the clubs. Because at the end of the day, they have they, they just have to think outside the box. Okay, gentlemen, let me come back to you on this issue of sponsorship, and I think Bonnie has raised it very well because we've been trying to do this for quite some time. I think we all agree that we cannot wait for government money. You look at the English Premier League and every other league in the world; it's 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 private money, it's investors, it's it's the private sector pumping in money. But for for us, we have struggled a bit. So our sponsor comes in, another one pulls out, and all that. What do we, what are we not getting right with this thing of sponsorship? I think it goes back to the okay to the clubs because they are not doing enough, and you know, you uh, know. Mm-hmm. So I, I think the the marketing, you know, most of the teams, as in our marketing structures, you know, mm-hmm. that's a department that you really need to invest in because always mm-hmm. uh, generating revenue into the club. We have so many ways. Kuna funds on kwa maybe on alipa yearly uh, sub unona. At times you have to to sell the merchandise, but again few few clubs do uh, do that. Uh, I can say maybe FC Leopards, maybe Goro that have uh, I can say that a big following. So yeah. I think that the, the teams should just restructure it and then make sure that uh, uh, they have to make money out of maybe the corporates because at times also you know ukiwa uh, you know you know these teams are not associated with the with the communities. Yeah. You know ukiangalia maybe okay, let me give you an example like uh, task FC you know mm. they, they they train at Ruaraka uh, it's the the estate is around um, Ngumba estate yeah. but when they are playing their games they go maybe play at Nakuru home games or mm-hmm. Meru home games so mm-hmm. how can you associate the community with the team so that you can generate the revenue okay. they should make sure that okay this is our home ground yeah. we should play here yeah. whenever task FC is playing they have de- they, they have that they have that done the marketing whereby kila kitu pale Ngumba estate in a stop wanakuja kuona nini wanakuja kuona and this is something we have seen in in Tanzania those guys Younger and, and is it younger and, yeah, Simba. and Simba? They like they can stop the whole city yeah, exactly. with the yellow. And I mean, so do we have something like that in Kenya? No, mm-hmm. so the clubs are not doing enough. Okay, Tunalia, maybe we don't have money but yeah. again. They're not doing enough to make sure that they, they, they bring money on board. David, I mean, I would understand if uh, Ruiri FC is still a small team, and let's say some other teams that were just born the other day, maybe they don't have fans yet. But we have teams that have been there, AFC and Gurumai, and they have quite a huge following. Why are the teams that even um, qualify as big teams also struggling to attract sponsors? Uh, Kenya, Kenya, as it is right now, is the sixth largest economy in Africa. Yes. I think after Nigeria, yeah. Egypt, uh, South Africa. South Africa, I stand corrected and think Tunisia, uh, Algeria and Morocco, yeah. so Kenya comes sixth. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of uh, resources in this country. You can't run away from that. Yeah. And there are lots of corporates that make billions of shillings in profits mm-hmm. a year. And uh, these corporates will want to sponsor sports activities. Yeah. But they will want to be associated with a brand that will improve its brand. They just don't put money into any entity. <laughs> they want to partner with somebody, yeah. um, make that person better or that brand better, mm-hmm. and that brand makes you better. Mm-hmm. So they will not be associated with a brand that uh, when they switch on the TV like has happened today, yeah. for one hour we're probably discussing negatives about football. They don't yeah. want to touch that brand. Mm-hmm. Sure. They want to be associated <coughs> with somebody where there's a lot of positivity. They don't want to be associated with the, uh, 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 football where two weeks ago uh, the sports cabinet secretary said he's, he's auditing the federation's finances because mm-hmm. of possible misappropriation of funds. I mean, yeah. it just, it, it's, it's just a given. So this, these funds are not... And, and, and I'll give you some, some straightforward examples. If you look at uh, 
ABSA, for example, ABSA is a big bank in Africa. Mm -hmm. ABSA sponsors the South African League, I stand corrected. ABSA sponsors the English Premier League. Yeah. But ABSA are here and they're making money here, but they're not going to put money in Kenyan football. Mm -hmm. But they're putting money in, the, in Zambian football, they're putting money in the English Premier League, they're putting money in South so Africa. So what is it in this league's coaches and, and, and because David? Because th 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 there is uh, some level of transparency yeah. in these leagues. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the brands there are brands that ABSA does want to be associated with. Yeah. Uh, but, but that's not the case here because if you uh, do a small research about Kenyan football, for 10 minutes, even online, if you go to Google and do a research of Kenyan football, yeah. you're, you're going to struggle to get a positive story about it's Kenyan about football corruption in, in, and what in the last one week, even from the <laughs> national team performances, to just this discussion. Look at the discussion between Boniface, James, and, and yeah. him. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, you're, if, if you're a possible brand that wants to invest in football and you're watching this and you're saying, this mm -hmm. is a former Harambe Stars player, this is a former Harambe Stars player, this is a former, uh, uh, this is a coach, yeah. an active coach, yeah. they can't seem to agree on anything and about I think football. I, I, this is a big <laughs> challenge that yes. you're, you're, you're giving us now. Yes, um, uh, sh 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 should I associate with this uh, quote-unquote confusion? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so the brands say no, 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 because they'll play safe. But there's a way around that. There's a way around that, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, if our MPs are good enough to be, uh, our lawmakers are good enough to ensure that sports grows, they can come up with policies in parliament that ensures these uh, companies that are profit making invest in football yeah. and the issue with transparency is taken care of. So yeah. that if uh, a brand like ABSA or any other brand puts 10, 50 million shillings into football yeah. and that money is mismanaged, then somebody has to be culpable. But yeah. there should be a law, in my opinion, that's the only way forward. There should be a law in Parliament and Senate that says if a company makes this amount of money, 100 million shillings in profit, you have to invest in the development of talent and then you get a tax rebate, for example. But, but I mean, that, that, that's, 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 that's using force, David. No, the, the, the transparency part, because you uh, morally cannot make money from the economy. Yeah. Hundreds of millions of shillings and billions of shillings. But that's my CSR. <laughs> I should decide if I want to invest in a, in a children's home or in a football. I mean, if, you're, if I don't like Kenyan football the way it is, I surely I put a can caveat. put my let, money let, let, let me just put it straight, because I want you to get the point. It's yeah. very important that you get the point. Yeah. Uh, there are laws that can allow you to invest in sports and yeah. get a tax rebate. Mm -hmm. You get my point? If yeah. you put 100 million shillings into, in, in, into football, for example, then you will not be taxed that when yeah. you're putting in your end of year returns. So, yeah. so, 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 the, so there's an incentive there. Mm -hmm. There's an incentive. Put money in football, yeah. then you get a tax rebate. Yeah. But that money in football, because what are the sponsors sharing? They want to be associated with these brands. It's, it's a given. Yeah. It happens all over the world. Uh, what, are they, what, what are they scared about? They're scared about the brand. Yeah. So put measures in place as well yeah. to ensure that uh, this mm -hmm. money is well taken care of. Mm -hmm. you, you get my point? So, yeah. so it, it, it's, it's a two-way. There are big corporates and managers whose kids play football yeah. or who, whose kids want to play football yeah. or whose neighbors want to get play football. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's a very small village. It's a small uh, society where we, you, if, if, if these kids don't play football and they're not nurtured well enough and they're not sponsored well enough, yeah. then what are we grooming? We're grooming drug addicts. We're grooming people mm -hmm. who have talents, yeah. but they're not, they're, they're not in a position to earn from their talents. Okay. So, so, so it's a chicken and egg. Which, which, which comes first? first. Yeah. Coaches and Taku respond. Uh, uh, good. Eh? I think uh, thinking uh, or listening to Kualima, what he's saying, yeah. it's very important. And yeah. uh, you, you see now, if we start thinking that way, then our football will go somewhere. Yeah. But let me t uh, take Kualima and, and, and all of you a little bit uh, behind. I'm all back. Yeah. In our conversation, we are talking about investment. And of course, investment comes uh, with marketing. And of course, marketing is numbers. Because yeah. when you're marketing a product or a service, then you need numbers. Yeah. And our football is not able today to attract the numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the two clubs maybe in, in, in Kenyan Premier League is Gorma here and AFC. Yeah. And they have issues with management because mm -hmm. they have numbers. But on the other side, they have issues with management. So if they polish uh, the issue with management, yeah. then I'm very sure the two clubs will stand. Yeah. But I, I want to uh, give a very simple uh, uh, st uh, scenario or situation here. We have teams even in the lower leagues with more numbers uh, yeah. prop than even the teams in the Premier League. And they are not suffering. One example is Marafi KFC. Mm -hmm. He's in, in Division 2. Yeah. And today they have even a bus from the president. What really? happened? Where are they based? They're, they're, they're nearly yeah. playing in Division 2. Mm -hmm. They had a bus from the president just mm -hmm. the other day. And, and they are not suffering. They have sponsors mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in their team. So what does that tell you? And they have numbers. When that team is playing, my friend, my the fans pitch, kuja, kuja. How is he? How is he on a mali uh -huh. so They have marketed their yeah. club. So everybody will come with the numbers. Mm -hmm. And if now we police the management within our clubs, then that we get it right. Go to Gogo Boys mm -hmm. from Kebira here. Kebira United. Those two teams playing also in lower leagues, Division 2. They have good numbers when their team is playing more than any, any other team in the Kenyan Premier League. 
If today you go a match uh, maybe between uh, Bidiko and Sofapaka, yeah. and Marafiki is playing against Gogo Boys, you will think that Marafiki and Gogo Boys are the teams in the, in the, in the top tier mm -hmm. because they have numbers. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are getting it wrong. Yeah. Let's market our clubs. Yeah. Let the fans, uh, let me feel that I need to watch this game. Mm -hmm. So if we market our clubs rightly, and, and, and Stoma said it uh, correctly, we have clubs today with Facebook pages which are less you know, with, uh, with followers, yeah. uh, more than even uh, my own academy, where yeah. we have maybe uh, very few followers because we are based, uh, you know, locally. Yeah. But a national team, yeah. uh, a, a team playing in the National League, yeah. have less than 5,000 followers yeah. in the Facebook. Mm -hmm. They have no Instagram. They have no social media platforms. Where is the sponsor going to come? Today, how many clubs in Kenya where we have, we can access their training, for example? How many? Through mm -hmm. YouTube or through something. Mm -hmm. But go to Europe, you can access everything. Yeah. So that's where we are getting it wrong. So if we, if we put numbers on, the, on our stadiums, yeah. the sponsor will come. Before I go to Boni on this one, Ruru Sports, I mean, uh, FC and our sponsor. Yes. Uh, who sponsors Ruru FC? Uh, we, we have a sponsor. We have Anka Hotel, who is, yeah. also, uh, who is uh, our partner. Yeah. And of course, we, we have parents uh, and the stakeholders who mm -hmm. come on mm -hmm. board and uh, of course we support the team yeah. and that's where we, we, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping insisting that if you have a good management yeah. the sponsor will not run away or mm -hmm. the partner will not run away mm -hmm. because like Warima has just said. Do you have mm -hmm. other teams in the level of Real UFC that have no one to sponsor are struggling? We, we do. Yeah. We do. Mm -hmm. Very many teams. So many teams. But it, oh, it, 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 uh, the, the bats now stops with the management of yeah. that club. What are you doing to attract that partner or that sponsor. Yeah. Because if you don't do it right, yeah. for example, he said it very well, if you're given resources and you mismanage, no one will come back. Okay. So if you're given resources, we manage them well. And this way I'm going back and uh, maybe answering about academies yeah. or accredited academies. Our academy, our own academy, we have levels from under five, both boys and girls, yeah. all the way to the senior team. Our senior team playing at division two and the ladies team uh, got promoted now to Division 1. Okay. And we are using our resources well. We are marketing in our Facebook. Just the other day we were hosting the Kenyan Premier League uh, players yeah. to our own academy to come and enjoy and talk with our kids and give them. And Stuma was one of them. Okay. I remember sometimes back. So this is where we want to, to, to lead our football. We okay. cannot just sit and, and you know, criticize everything that is okay. happening around us. Okay. B B Bonnie, clearly, um, I mean, there's something that individual teams can do to market themselves. But there's also that bit about how do we make um, not just one team marketable, but our entire league. Because there's a way you just open your TV every day and you find the Zambian leagues actually uh, playing and it's being shown, the South African league is being shown, the Nigerian or Ghanaian league. How do we also incorporate that aspect of marketing the league in itself to be something I'd be interested in as a Tanzanian, as a Ugandan, to watch the Kenyan league? I think the most important thing here, uh, we lack what you call transparency okay. and accountability. That's the only thing. Once you're transparent, once you're accountable for each and every single cent that somebody gives you, uh, definitely uh, sponsors will come. Mm -hmm. But look at it this way. Most of the clubs, ask them to give you, to give you a financial report, maybe for the past two, three years. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Mm -hmm. Won't see anything. They have nothing. So this is a sponsor who is coming in. Yeah. Wants to sponsor you and uh, it tells you uh, kindly give me your financial statements for the past three years. Mm -hmm. Reports for the past three years. You do you do not have. Then uh, how how do you expect him to uh, to come in? Yeah. The sponsor wants to come to know how you're paying your taxes, how you're paying your players, where are your accounts which bank in the, in the country hold your accounts. You know, they, they, they need all that so that at least when they sit down and they're looking at what they have to do, uh, they're looking, okay, these guys were given 100 million. Um, this this how the 100 million was used. But uh, you give clubs maybe, because at the end of the day, even me, if, if, if I'm a sponsor, I'm coming on board, and then I tell you, my friend, I, I'm going to give you uh, 50 million. Uh, at the end of the season, I want you to account for each and every single cent. At the end of the season, you cannot even account for only a million. The rest vanished. It's, it's, it's quite sad. Mm -hmm. And then uh, look at these clubs. Most of these clubs, uh, ask them where are their bank accounts. They will not even tell you which bank account they are running. You go to respond that there's a, a, a club that uh, sponsors wanted to come. Then uh, you know what they're telling the sponsor. 
Okay, fine. How much do you, are you coming with on board? 100 million. Okay, fine. Do this 20 million, put in this account, 20 million, put this account, and the, the rest 60, maybe okay. put here. He also wants to see you know, all of his money in one package. So at least he knows exactly what to do. So it's it's all about uh, transparency and accountability. Once you once every everything is put on table and everybody knows exactly this is what was used. Yeah. And this uh, exactly we had a deficit of this and we had to borrow some some amount from somewhere and then we you no know, the next season he'll automatically maybe give you if he was giving you 100 100 million he still he'll automatically give you even 300 million because. Is seeing what you have done. Okay. Give the sponsor you are projected in a projected projects or whatever you want to do. What you want to do in the next maybe three or four years? What do you want to do? Ask these clubs what do you want to do in the next maybe even one month alone. They can't tell you. Yeah. They'll not tell you. So that's the biggest problem that's happening in Kenya football. And that's it's, it's all about packaging. Okay. Once you package ourselves well, uh, definitely even the national team will. We still get those sponsors. There are so many guys who want to sponsor the national team. There are so many guys who want to sponsor these clubs. Mm -hmm. Go to them. Do it. They'll get. Okay. FC Lopez and Gormaya, they, found, they, they, they have funds. FC Lopez and Gormaya. For example, FC Lopez has more than how many how many funds across, across the country? More than 5 million funds across the country. But look at, the, look at their membership. Huh? They, they only have 1,000 or 500 members. Yeah. If it's too much right now, maybe... If it has gone up, it's around 2,000. Yeah. Are we doing enough? That injustice is in football. Yeah? We are doing injustice to, uh, to, to, to our clubs. Okay. So it's about uh, about understanding. It's about knowing exactly what you want. And then from there, definitely the sponsors will come. They will trickle in. Okay. I think he has also raised another valid point of uh, what this number of fans, how it translates to the team. Because if you go to other leagues, if the, the team is big, it's big. So, I mean, if you, for instance, the, the younger and the Simba that we were talking about, there's this thing about fans buying the official jerseys from the official store and they can buy 400,000 jerseys in, in, in just a week or in just a day. We, we don't see that so much of that here. I'm an economy in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at one because I'm looking at the vision and listening. I'm going to point in the Italian example. Okay, so many clubs they don't have they don't have even physical address. Malu na wana the 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 chairman or the team and alipia uchazaji kwa gari. So it's only be to lazima zi have to change. We have to run clubs more professional. And da kujamba kani kienda back pia na kujia kuna kitu litaje. We have a club licensing. Now this is something that I I, I really need uh, to emphasize na in a in a fall back to the federation because. Yeah. It's, it's the body that is mandated to run the uh, football in this country. So, let's make sure the, the, the rules and regulations are for, for up to date. No, can get Vizuri. If you club licensing, if the federation has make sure the clubs are for by the way, in a killer kitu, in every aspect of football in that thing. So, we can get football aspect. Football ni 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 kitu yado. Mm -hmm. No, no. Now, the coach said that, uh, you know, as a corporate, I want I want visibility. I want the numbers. Yeah. Why is it that you have know, clubs in your division two, Ziko Uko regional, Ziko Nana? Zikona fans. Why? Ziko in those communities. Kiangalia marafiki iko besi nyeri. The, the fans really associate with the club. Go go boys. Wana, wako associate na wako pale kibre. Wako kwa community. Unangalia any corporate nataka kuenda kwe. Kata kama ni bana enda yiko pale kwa sababu wanaona ni numbers. Okay. Na it came to that point. Lisa ya kwamba These clubs need to have like let, let the community feel associated with the clubs. Nimesema kama Tasker na cheza ngumba. Let wacha pale ngumba business ifungwe. Wakuja pale kwa I'm actually a fan of Tasker. Yes. No, no. So <laughs> Wakuja wanunue, jazzies. Do yeah. you have that? Atuna marketing mm -hmm. department. Unwana. So we have so many things in Yaziko in order na tukizie kapa moja, yeah. tutakuwa tukuela. Lakini kushes kuna kitu na feel ni kama ni sisi mafans pia tuna feel. Kwa sababu, if 5 million people are fans, watakuambia sisi buwana ni chui ni moja. Sisi ni mafans wa, wa AFC. But when it translates to people registering to become members, which actually becomes a bit of active involvement of a fan in developing their club. Amesema ni watu miatanu wa ma... I'm a little for time. drive, come here to make sure that we have this drive. My fans will come on board. Cause we have fans who are feel maybe we may not support FC Leopards, but if Coco Machina, he is doing it, we have fans FC. I only anything Mali visibility FC. I have no Mali. We have fans. I come on board. Let me come in here because uh, you, you asked about uh, AFC having many fans. Yes, they do. Yeah. Gorma here, they do. But you realize the fan base keep on reducing nowadays because the club itself it's not giving up to what the expectations of their fans. Uh -huh. You talked of Simba, you talked of Vyanga. Mm -hmm. Today, if you go to YouTube, you will realize 
Simba will put some training. Even when the players are just training. Yeah. They will involve even their, their fans yeah. during their training. They will involve very small thing, but they will make it public. They will publicize it. They will talk about it. And that's where the beauty of football is. With your signing Situma to our team, we cannot sign Kule Kuchinia, Chinia Kitanda, Tunastukia Stuma, Nguyu Anacheza, Anacheza. Tunanaus Kim. In a finance uh, two weeks before, mm -hmm. we talk about it. He's coming. Yes. We've Situma. seen even in, in Europe, yeah. he's coming home, Cristiano. It, it's a debate. Mm -hmm. But here, we're not getting it right. In our marketing, yeah. what are our marketing departments doing for our clubs? Today, if we ask how many players have signed for Sofa Parker, I might be aware because they have one of our players yeah. from Ruiru, <laughs> but very few will know yeah. because it has not been put in the public. But again, okay, maybe just seconds. I have to okay. go for a break briefly. Yeah. Okay, on the same, we can get the clubs or maybe value players. Because Babu, we can get the Simba Yanga. We can get the fans who are the stadium to receive the player. We can get the package the player has been given. You know, in a condition, it in a condition, it is not to give the ground. You know, for us clubs, are packing on a part. I'm good. Yes, we are going to be. Well, hold on. Contract is yeah. Then move on. Move on. Move. Move over. Who? Ukuja the other side. Mm -hmm. nini? Ina mancha kwanza ujanipa value. Na nikikuja kama nimekuja pia free. I yeah. don't give you the services. Mm -hmm. But akuna mtu mwenye kuhili nkutuwa maybe ni 2 million naenda nuwe mchezaja na contract from yeah. maybe FC Leopards anenda kakamega almost 2 million na iwekwe public. Because Corporate people are owned by the way the club is spending. Yeah. Many are good players. What are they going to associate? They are going to make five million, yeah. two million already. Share and what? Who player? Like any kind of match, they are going freely. Chini vile kocha me sema chini yamaj. Aku namu tara kujja. David, in twenty seconds, kuna mtu na sema jazi za Kenya ni expensive kuliko za European club. <laughs> uh, not true. <laughs> yeah, not true. I think the the, the original replica jersey of uh, Arsenal and Manchester United is way more expensive than the Kenyan jerseys. But it's just like I told you about the corporates as well. Nobody will spend 2,000 shillings to buy a product yeah. that he doesn't see value in. You, if the team is performing well, the team is winning matches, yeah. everybody's associated with the team, and there's a lot of positive vibes coming from the team, yeah. 2,000 is not much for a Kenyan to afford. A Kenyan fan can afford much more. Kenyans yeah. drink for four or five hours watching yeah. football. <laughs> the Kenyans uh, subscribe to pay TV and pay around 4,000, 5,000 shillings a month yeah. to, to watch football. I mean, there are very many investments we can show you that Kenyans put into sports. Okay. So it's just not about the 2,000 bob. David, I have to go. But yes, uh, we've talked about the challenges, the problem and all that, but because we don't want to depress you at 8 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> we want to talk about the positives and look at the future. What can we change among all these issues that we are facing so we do all that after this quick break don't go too far Best value for your money by subscribing today for Classic Bouquet at only 899 shillings for 30 days to enjoy 64 channels. Classic Bouquet. Premium content on Star Times. Subscribe today. Mudokinjo Paints and Cement delivers cement countrywide for free. The hardware deals with paints, cement, waterproofing and decorating sundries. Mudokinjo has 17 branches across the country. Mudokinjo delivers reliable, accessible and affordable building materials that are used within all residential houses, factories, office and public buildings for the purpose of decoration and protection. Let's see what they're developing right now. Morphix pants with anatomic fit technology. New Morphix pants, an invention from babies for babies. You should also try Morphix. I'm growing up, I'm growing into every moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if 
Now to the moment. Minute Made Nutri Defenses, fortified with vitamin E and zinc to help improve your defense system. You're not going to show her anything without showing me first. Don't give her any information that won't be of help to me, got it? All right, you got it. In that case, I'll be meeting with you first tomorrow. Just forget I exist, all right? No. Vanny, wait, where are you? Leave her, Henry. Leave her alone. Sweetie, where are you going? To meet my boyfriend, bye. Come Stay back. Stay there, I'll handle this. Vanessa! Why should we run after her every time she acts up? You have a better suggestion? Well... Let's do nothing. If she wants to be treated like an adult, then she needs to face the consequences likewise. Period. The Nairobi City County Government, in collaboration with the Nairobi Metropolitan Services, NMS, and Kenya Revenue Authority, has extended the 100% waiver on outstanding penalties and interests to those who will pay all outstanding principal arrears by 30th November 2021. Thank you for staying with us for the last part of this conversation. James Situma, David Kualimu, Coach Njogo, of course, as well as Boniface Ambani are still with me for this final part of this conversation. Gentlemen, let's look at the future. We want to go back to the good old days and even get better than the good old days, both in terms of the league and in terms of the national team. But I'd like us to start with something that Situma um, highlighted earlier on, which is the issue of remuneration. Yeah. So it has to change because, yeah. uh, you know, a serious team, it has to be, have a fiscal address. If I feel I want to go to Tasca, maybe at the office, see staff teacher, because I'm going to travel, I'm going to stop. TM akienda kila kitu ime stop unaona so lazima to come up na hizo structures and na make teams in run and another thing is that urge the government you on top of the things you support football in these countries yeah. you know in this country kwa sababu nikiangalia we have county governments at the moment na hizo sema big congratulations to Oparanya ukiangalia ame ame refine sana Kakamega county na ukiangalia the Bukungu sayu ukienda wezi angalia Bukungu ikiwa ile tulicheza maybe 2 3 years ah. back eh, ameibadilisha na ukiangalia the performance of the team pia sasa hii imechange ukiangalia mm -hmm. the county na support team yeah. Hizo ni vitu lazima government yangalie ikuje kuna corporate wamesha yawe ikuja kusupport teams kwa sababu wanzo wana kuja on board governor wana hapa ndiyo kuna do yeah. and like indakani yekue wakati corporate wana kuja kusupport teams yeah. indakana levies kwanza kwa hizi corporate zipungue ndiyo wa support more because mm -hmm. when they walk around they say okay youth ndiyo future way country yeah. they, they talk about the youth now youths work for sports if they are not actively participating in the sports wana watch sports mm -hmm. so youths Kama wana taku support you. Acha government is support. The corporates wanzo wana support the team, wana support the sports. Gava lazi mekupunguzie mzigo. Ndiyo, kila mtu wakue attracted kuja ku support sport. Unlike mwenye nakuja kieka maybe 5 million, ina geuzo wange na kwa gava wana angale oke okay, hapa kuna do. Hapo ni yasa waneka? Wana pata waneka strict nini rules. So, lazi mayo kiti change. And, and again, uh, maybe to the clubs, yeah. uh, to the players, lazi makukue na more agents. Kwa, kwa players because you can get professional players how is it you manage you know mm -hmm. you manage at the same time you are playing football so yeah lazima to kwena more agencies in your business players genuine agents in your school um work registered or no one you can legally registered when you may be federation on a duo on your run uh players so yeah. lazima players who are ones who accept and like you know partner players when you can get a maybe video me say my piano and i'm a part of 50 50 thousand yeah at attacking back at a community network a jewe you know maybe at a part of something what's on a june which is their guru my own which is a fc lazima lazima hizo vitu eh kuna unalipwa punch hizo ni timu kubwa sana unaona so lazima tukue na hizi agency na maisha kwamba players pia wa the the package ipande cause 
value yangu mimi unanipea itakuja ita kwa kwa uwanja na nitakupatia example ukiangalia the few players wenye umetoka maybe outside the country wenye walikuwa wanacheza hapo ukiangalia okay i'll give an example maybe Goromaya yeah. uh, that time of uh, Midi Gagere ukiangalia the Twisenge unaona ukiangalia the um, the the Ugandan left back wal Simbi unaona those are the players who walikuwa wanapata something good the package was good at Goromaya yeah. what happened they were performing mm-hmm. unaona so the way you value me is the same way I'll give you performance for the performance for one performance for one so okay. that clubs zianze kuangalia players this business wasiangalia you know the clubs wanaangalia anga like they are doing the players the favors mm-hmm. no we are in it's a 50-50 cause ni yeah. nacheza you are paying me but napandisha brand na kuuza okay. unaona yeah. so lazima uangalie business wise david nimekumbuka kitu nzuri sana kuhusu uh, mambo ya county sasa zinaanza ku sponsor team i think i think kuna vihiga siko shoka kama kakamega ni ya county pia yeah. how does that play out tutaanza kuona situation ya 47 county teams uh it, it it's a good one yeah. uh, from where i sit because the last time uh, i i think uh, arguably the, the best uh, spell uh, of success in kenyan football was in the 80s yeah. and, uh, and and it coincided with i think a german coach uh, shawl who came in and put in uh, 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 academies yeah. uh, uh, or or training centers in in nakuru nairobi kisumu and some areas and and those centers came up with some of the best talents that we've had to date so 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 it's a given that they're, they're not always about it you have to invest in the talents from a very young age yeah. and, uh, and 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 bring them up as he said train them and make them the best uh, finished article for national team duty or for senior assignment so yeah. uh, these counties not necessarily owning a football team but if they can get involved in the development on football of football in one way or another yeah. not necessarily owning a football team yeah. I, i think when we have a bigger pool of talent now that is talking about the training of coaches which is a very other important aspect yeah. because you need trained coaches to nurture these talents i mean that that's the way it works if Lionel Messi was identified at the age of 13 he, yeah. he signed the, his first uh, a contract with Barcelona at the age of uh, 13 i remember Francesco Fabregas for Arsenal his first uh, professional contract he signed it at 16 and it was worth around 60 million Kenyan shillings then yeah. 500,000 pounds so that's the way to go uh, but the county governments can play a very crucial role in the development of talent yeah. but bottom line there is a national conversation that needs to be held on where we move and where we want to go and how it will be done I like that you 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 have reservations about counties owning clubs because I also do. I remember county governments are the same people fighting with national government pesa ijerelisiwa. Sasa utapata team inafaa kwenda kucheza na Ruiru FC lakini bado wako Vihiga ama West. That's one. Two yeah. is that uh, as we saw with Vihiga some time back. Yeah. When uh, the first governor of Vega Moses Akaranga came in and he was so passionate about football. Yeah. You could see him at, at 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 some stadiums watching football, you could see him watching training, you could see him supporting the players, you could see him buying the team a bus. And then after five years he's no longer the and governor. You- somebody else comes in and the current governor with all due respect does not quite see value in football yeah. and suddenly the team collapses maybe so, anapenda agriculture anapenda agriculture <laughs> he wants to, to put money in health or something else yeah. so if you de- if you invest in the development of talent it's a much of a safer bet because these players you're investing in the long term but if you just invest in a team yeah. and possibly there are changes in tomorrow and somebody comes in and feels well uh, why, why why should i put 50 million yeah. shillings a year in, in in a football team what what are we getting in the county as a return okay. so 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 the, the the development of talent is a much safer route okay yeah. C- coaches you are in the grassroots just like situma right now mambo academy developing the talent for tomorrow from where you sit what do you think needs to change uh, of course uh, they they've, they've said it well and uh, oh, one important thing that we have to appreciate that is we need to know where we are yeah. and where we are going and yeah. this discussion is very important and it's very healthy because you realize we are touching on very key issues yeah. you talk of youths and i will just uh, take from where kwalima had just left about counties in kiambu we had a team kiambu allstars yeah. it was almost to uh, to get promotion to nsl that is yeah. national super league yeah. but when the transition came <laughs> the governor who came in abolished Completely. the team disbanded the team and the youth uh, you know uh, uh, suffered mm-hmm. and kiambu people know that we had a very nice team so it is very important we have policies even if a county was to own a team that even if stuma comes today as a governor or coach john comes today as a governor the team will remain and the policies should stick because that's where we are getting it uh, wrong in terms of the counties in terms of our football uh, we have positives uh, as well as negatives the positives are one the coaches are being trained yeah. if every coach decides that this certificate I'll not keep it in my house i will use it to nurture talent in my local area because 
we cannot bloggers all of we cannot be bloggers all of us we yeah. cannot uh, be uh, cry baby all of us and then we say uh, things are bad everything <coughs> is bad so we have to start uh, by asking ourselves what are you doing as an individual especially yeah especially <coughs> i cannot sit here as a coach and cry and complain because you will ask me what are you doing as a coach today i will tell you i have over 200 kids in real training so it is the work of the federation, it is the work of the administrators to know that in Ruiru we have an academy. How can we support them? Yeah. How can we give these uh, players yeah. a chance? How can we have equal competitive uh, players getting that chance to get the uh, national team? Yeah. And Bonfa said it very well. During his time, he would receive that call up and then say, uh, my friend, I can't believe I am the one going there. Yeah. We need then to have that equal chances yes. for all these uh, players. Yeah. So, if we get that right, my friend, we will now start changing our football. And yeah. we will now uh, discuss different uh, matters. Okay. But we have to appreciate, and I repeat again, that our football is not all dead. And we have those things that are happening, very positive. Yeah. Like I mentioned, Cuff B is the first time it's happening here in Kenya. Yeah. Mark you, in, in the previous regimes, we had a Cuff way which was done for one week, mm -hmm. imagine, cafe yeah. do we being done for five days, Kualima, what can you learn? Yeah. And, and, and in Europe, these courses are six months, eight months, coaches are getting uh, knowledge, coaches are, are getting information. And today we have a cafe be running for four months, which is a very positive thing for yeah. me as a coach. Yeah. And if somebody with like-minded like me will understand that is very positive. Cafe day today is happening for 10 days, 10 good days. <coughs> so these coaches, it is their work. You don't become a keyboard warrior and complain every time. So start with yourself. What are you doing there in your local area? I like what uh, some international players are doing. Look at uh, Musa Oteno. Yeah. He's dealing with youths. Yeah. He's growing talent. Despite us complaining, we will complain, yes, but we will also give solutions. Yeah. Because you cannot complain and you don't have solutions. Okay. You have to say, this is wrong, so this is what is right. Okay. The beauty about this... Uh Bonnie, is that we have identified challenges both off and on the field. And you have been both off and on the field. From where you sit, what needs to urgently change? Because all is not lost, but we need to do something. Okay, all is not lost. We need to do something. Um, I'll start from the top. Yeah. I think the government has also let us down. Uh, they promised us more than around five students. I don't know if they even delivered one. So those are some of the things that maybe uh, Honorable Sakaja should be looking at. Yeah. Uh, at least maybe um, call those guys uh, to the Senate and ask them questions as to why the studies are not there, rather than uh, wanting uh, to stop the audit of the Federation. That's uh, uncalled for. But at least uh, he came back and apologized. He said the uh, people misquoted him. So uh, the government is not, has not done enough to help our football. Uh, that's one thing. And uh, when I come uh, to the to the federation, uh, Coach Jogu uh, he just said that uh, so many coaches are being trained, but uh, they are being trained. They are going where? There's something else that we should also be asking ourselves because so many coaches have been trained. Yes, the federation have been seeing them uh, moving around, creating a center of excellence here, uh, uh, left right center. What are they doing to help these coaches that have been trained? I think the most important thing now the federation should do, if they actually want our football to grow, they should now second these coaches. These coaches are being trained. It should just be a, man, a, a mandate. They uh, they move across across uh, across the country and. Uh, Make sure any 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 school that actually is serious with sports, they have to uh, second one of the coaches, one of the trained coaches. So at least they'll uh, be able to track them, because there's no there's no point of uh, training more than three, four, five thousand coaches and you can't track them. Uh, again, when it comes to the national team, uh, Arambe Stars, uh, I think uh, the, uh, the federation again. Uh, what they should do, let them get permanent coaches. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't like this issue of course, seconding club coaches uh, to the national team. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they only think about their, their, their clubs. You know, okay. when you say, maybe I'm coaching, I'm coaching at Bandari, and then uh, you second me to the national team. When I don't have duty, I'll just go back to the national team. I'll not go back to, uh, I'll, not, I'll go back to Bandari. I'll not go to watch uh, maybe uh, police playing uh, AFC Lopards because that's not my duty. So 
let them if they actually need those uh, those coaches from those club level, uh, clubs then yeah. definitely let them uh, tell them to resign and uh, give them a permanent job for maybe the next two three years and see what they can do okay and when it comes to clubs now the clubs kindly it's about structures it's, uh, we come back to structures let's get our structures well because i need a club that uh if they knew I think I'm losing Bonnie there, but because of the time, gentlemen, we have to wrap this conversation. I'll give each one of you just 30 seconds to give us your closing remarks. Maybe I can start with you, coaches. Uh, one is to appreciate you for calling us here in the, the entire uh, <coughs> NTV because yeah. it's a very great opportunity to talk and, uh, you know, uh, tell Kenyans and give them uh, uh, positives and as well critique the negatives. And mine, as I wind up, it, uh, um, we need to... Uh, if it's a federation, for example, they need to include. They need to include all these people <coughs> with like-minded people yeah. who can, uh, you know, see positives and give ideas. Okay. Because we cannot have, uh, you know, few individuals, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing everything. So we need to see uh, in all those categories. We have coaches uh, from different regions getting into, into into our national teams and also in our local areas, and, of, uh, and especially uh, also our leagues. Yeah. Uh, we need to do something, like uh, Stuma said, and uh, it is very important because if we don't do that, yeah. we'll keep on blaming the national team coach, and you have your players as a Kenyan Premier League coach, and you're not giving them enough. Okay. But Bonnie, if you're back with us, 20 seconds to just say goodbye, your final word. My final words, I just wish everybody in the studio all the best. You guys, thank you. It has been a pleasure. I think you've shared uh, enough football. You can talk. When we start talking, you can talk uh, for the rest of the day. Yeah. I just hope that uh, whatever we shared, on the positive uh, note, everything, everybody takes it lightly and uh, we move on. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Bonnie. David. Yeah, uh, I believe uh, it, it, it's an interesting period in Kenyan football right now with the government uh, having decided to audit Football Kenya Federation. Uh, I believe very many <coughs> Kenyans and football fanatics are awaiting the, the results of the audit. But I believe it's now time to have a football conversation as a country uh, to decide where we want our football to be in the next five years, the next 10 years, the next 15 years, and the journey we are going to go to get there. For this conversation, we need all the stakeholders on board, and we need to have a very sober and uh, dis a discussion and uh, have to see what will come out of it. All right. Jeps. Yeah, for me, first of all, uh, I want to say thank you uh, for the for the opportunity, and again, the second one, I'd say also the, the the to the government. You know, they really need to to support the the football uh, uh, industry in this country because uh, if they have the goodwill, I, I, I believe we can do better. Uh, they can they support the, the, the county government, support them because I believe we have the, the sports funds in those county governments. So if you are willing to support the sports, you will just support the sports. And again, maybe for football, uh, maybe uh, those uh, in leadership, let us uh, involve everyone, let us receive everyone's opinion, whether it's good or bad, just uh, you pick the, the positive, you leave the negative, and, yeah. and then we move forward. And then for the for the players for the guys that have been uh, for the former players let us get involved in these matters let us get into the frying pan so that we can solve the, the situation wonderful i think the biggest takeaway for me from this entire conversation is we might be doing badly but there's so much that we can do to make sure that kenya's football gets to the next level we have been talking about the state of kenyan football many thanks to david kolim who is a sports journalist with the nation media group uh, of course my colleague here as well as james situma he's a former harambe stars player as well as the chairman of the kenya football welfare association and in studio with me also this morning, John Jogu is a football coach and director of Ruiru Sports Academy. And finally, of course, joining us virtually this morning is Boniface Ambani, a former Harambe Stars forward. And I hope all that we have talked about has helped you, of course, enlighten you on how we can all improve our football here in Kenya. And, of course, many thanks to you, our viewers, for keeping us company all through the last two hours as we dissect this conversation. And we all hope that our football improves and gets to the best level that it should but this also happens to be my last show here on ntv yes you heard me right and i have to just say thank you it feels like yesterday when i went on air with my first show but it's actually been some 10 months and i've been here for the last three years yet the last 10 months have been the most rewarding and fulfilling for me all i'm trying to say is this has been a dream come true for me and an absolute honor 
of my life. I think we've done an amazing job. Thanks to you, of course, our viewers and the amazing team that wakes up every day to put this together. So I'm just hopping off. But the show will continue, of course, with a new host and the rest of the team with the same energy. And you can bet it will only get better and better. So this is to say thank you to you, our viewers, the panelists who have lent us their invaluable knowledge and expertise, and of course the team producing the show every day, starting with my co-host Gladys Keshanja, the producers Jen and Elsie, Jackie, Diana and Arnold, the directors, Ingati, the video editor, Ida from Digital, the engineers as well as the STOs and everyone else whose effort goes into putting this amazing show every day. Thank you very much for one last time. My name is Victor Kiprob. Goodbye and God bless. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. For What's the song saying? I wish I knew even one verse of it, I could say something. <laughs> so this is? Uh, so uh, the care creeds, uh, it's been really keep prop and uh, we wish you all the best and uh, it's been a good journey. You've been a brilliant host, and uh, we will miss you, keep up. You know a Kalenjin man is not allowed to cry, right? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't cry, yeah. but uh, we will miss you so much. All the hard work you put into this show. Uh, you have worked hard for the last 10 months, yeah? So, and uh, when you broke the news to me that you're leaving, I couldn't hold back my tears, but uh, we'd miss you, Kiprop. And so, uh, mm -hmm. Gladys is on the call. She also wants to say something to you. How, how do I... <laughs> oh, Rafiki, look at you! Rafiki! <laughs> Hi! Hi, how oh. are you? Yanni, umesema a Kalenjin man cannot cry, but we shall try. So hey, <laughs> we really celebrate you. Yeah. We thank you for being such a sport, being such a great colleague even as we walk the journey of your world, I must say, you are one quick student, really. I mean, in a few months, weeks actually, you took up and you flew and you made us proud. So even as you go forth, as I keep telling you, go forth ye and conquer. <laughs> All we right. celebrate you and really appreciate you, Victor. I'm not going to cry, Gladys. I'm not going to cry. So thank you very much. Yes. I think I have to say, if you can hear me, I think you're an amazing person. You're a very kind human being. Um, you might say I've been a good student, but it's only because you were a good teacher. And I think you've just nurtured me like a small baby. I've never done live um, hosting or presenting before. But I guess this is all credit to you and the entire amazing team that produces this show. I have to say that this is one of the best teams on television. They wake up every day. Perhaps we're here as early as 4 a.m. So I have to say thank you very much to everyone, Monica, Warungu, CK, and literally everyone else you can see around you and everyone else you can't see. Thank you very much. This has been a dream come true and an absolute honor for me. God bless you. I think CK wants to say something as well. Not really. Please say something. <laughs> <laughs> so keep up. I'm sorry. So this was the live yeah, that you were told. Yeah? <sighs> so that we could get you to, to, to end well, to end the show a bit early so that we can say goodbye to you. I thought we had a live event we are crossing Which over one? to. Which <laughs> one? It is this one. It's this one? Thank you. Yes. Uh, maybe, <clears throat> what do I say? As Gladys has said, yeah, you are a very fast student. We were not very sure about you, and I think you know that. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just being very candid. <laughs> So when you said, let's, yeah. let's put uh, keep up on air, and I'm like, okay, fine. So you started the first month, the second month, and I started getting SMSs, and I think I used to forward them to Jane and uh, WhatsApp. And a guy, not even women, but some guys are like, CK, where did you get this guy from? Uh, I'm like, he's been there, but on business news, and now he's on your world. And truly, truly, you're going far, you're going places, you're very humble, please do not change. Mkalenjin man, baringo, vilata ujiku dance, tafadhali. That last part was not necessary. 
Anyway, I really want to wish you all the best, my dear. And I think it was your time, and it is your time. So make sure. Ukumbuke lakini and TV. All right. Thank you very much. Asante. Wow. Okay, so <laughs> these guys were not ready for yeah, this. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm not prepared them. Yeah, so uh, Coach Devi and Jemo Munaiza Kuja will help Kev. Kiprop cut his cake as we bid bye to him. Please don't cry, Kiprop. I will not cry, <laughs> but I'm not a cake person. Sasa <laughs> uh, okay. si producer, okay. Elsie, please. Uh huh. Wow, wonderful. <laughs> Okay. All right, David. You've been a very good person. Please, please, come on, David. Come on, David. Mhm. Aye, coaches, please. Ah, yeah, yeah. We show, James. Let's do this way. Yeah. I've lost all the gangster points today. We're still on there. <laughs> Please don't do this part. <laughs> you can do this one off here, I promise you. Keep up. It's our last day with you. So, you're gonna do what we tell you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna do the last instruction. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You guys should give him a facial. <laughs> oh yeah? yeah? No, no, please. No, 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 no. Yeah. I've got all the gangster points. Thank you very much. So Kiprop, we wish you all the very best and uh, we will miss you. And uh, like in my mother tongue, we say, mm -hmm. like uh, where you live, you will come back. Yeah. And, uh, All right. Thank you very much. Right. Asante Swano. <laughs> I'm not saying anything else. <laughs> okay.